Mr President, <coughs> uh, I move the motion number 86 standing in my name. I bring the second motion this week, given the opportunity presented by this additional sitting day and I ask for an investigation into the homelessness crisis in our state. I'm very new to this role and we all know I come into this place with an agenda based around the taxi and hire car industry and an intense desire to bring a big picture planning to our transport systems. I am also charged with advocating on behalf of the electorate who gave me this opportunity. So, this, so as a new member in Eastern Metropolitan Melbourne, I am regularly meeting with council community groups in my electorate. Uh, what has struck me, shocked, saddened and shamed me is how many of the population are facing a crisis in housing and how hidden the problem is. Uh, until very recently, I believe homelessness was a problem in our inner city Melbourne. I thought it was about people sleeping rough on our city streets. I thought it was about alcohol, drugs, abuse and mental illness. And it is. It's absolutely about all of those things. But this most obvious part of homelessness problem represents only about 7% of those of crisis in our state. Homelessness is a very real issue out in the eastern suburbs. For many and varied reasons, some people don't know where they and their families are going to sleep tonight. This is a very real and immediate problem. Across Australia, almost 289,000 people were helped by specialist homeless services in 2018 financial year. 40% of those people were here in Victoria. I find this absolutely astounding. Nearly 117,000 people sought assistance in Victoria. Almost 40% of those people were homeless with absolutely nowhere to go, and only three in 10 of those homeless people were assisted into housing. Can you imagine the feeling of not knowing where you're going to sleep tonight, and when you, when you go to ask for help and being told there's nowhere for you to go and your family? In my eastern metropolitan region, the numbers have shocked me. Over 14,000 people have assessed homelessness assistance services in the council areas in, that touch Eastern Metro region in the last financial year, representing 15% of service requests across Victoria. Monash has more than 800 known homeless individuals within its council area, 35% are sleeping in cars, 18% in local parks, others are couch surfing or in out of emergency housing, and almost 50% of these people have been homeless for more than 12 months. However, over 1,800 people in Monash have made contact requesting help from homeless service providers during the year. In Knox, uh, 2,650. In Maroondah, 2,238. In Whitehorse, 1,739. In Banyul, 1,261. In Bundara, 953. And Nilambuk, 136. When we look at the numbers, it seems impossible that such huge number of people being constructed like this, and we just don't notice. We just don't notice them. They are invisible. What really shocks me that in Victoria, 64% of these people are women and 30% are under 18 years of age. 47% are fleeing domestic and family violence. 90% of these women are turned away on the first request looking for long-term accommodation services. Women who separate from a violent partner are walking to a whole new world of problems. Six in every ten women experiencing housing stress post-separation. And even if they stay in their own home, three in ten women face financial stress and abuse from their partners uh, if, if he leaves and are able to stay in their own homes. Most women rely on their friends for housing after leaving a violent relationship. They are couch surfing or living in shared accommodation. 40% go to friends and family. These are our mothers and our daughters. They are struggling. In Australia today, one in five of these women who have left a, domestic, uh, a violent domestic situation will go back because they have no financial support and nowhere else to go. So again, these numbers are staggering. Nearly 117,000 people assisted in Victoria last year. How many people didn't seek assistance? How many of our youth are couch surfing to avoid entering a foster or welfare system, riding it out till they turn 18? How many women stay in a violent relationship because they have nowhere else to go? How much of this problem is hidden? In preparing this motion, I have met many service agencies and council groups across Melbourne to hear the difficulties they face in delivering services. Uh, what they tell me is the number of individuals experiencing homelessness is increasing at a steady rate. Everyone working in this space is overwhelmed. They are overwhelmed with the volume of need and the hopelessness of the many individual situations. 
There is a lack of housing options for people facing homelessness, and this is across emergency, transitional and long-term affordable and social housing. Whitehorse Council, for example, has the second highest level of social housing in the East. Approximately 1,463 households nominated as living in social housing in the 2016 census, with a little over 2 per cent of all households in the council area. But as a region in the eastern metropolitan region has significantly less social housing than other metropolitan regions, approximately six properties per 1,000, estimated residential population compared with 11 in the north and west uh, metropolitan and eight in the southern metropolitan regions. Make no mistake, this is not a reflection of lack of demand. Supply of social housing levels are very low across the board. According to research from the Eastern Affordable Housing Alliance, there is a current shortfall of 2,350 social housing dwellings in Whitehorse alone. Figures provided by the Box Hill Department of Health and Human Services Regional Office, which covers all of Boondara and some suburbs in Whitehorse and Manningham, show 1,800 applicants waiting for social housing and almost 300 people waiting to transfer to more suitable housing arrangements. While there is significant investment in social housing, it simply isn't enough. Victoria has the lowest percentage of housing stock uh, provided with social housing in Australia. A, two, a 2013 analysis by Swinburne University showed the percentage of social housing in Victoria at 3.4%. There's been a lot of investment by the government and we thank them for that. The Homeless and Sleeping Rough Action Plan includes $120 million to increase the supply of social housing and $152 million to buy and build more housing for women and children to escape family violence. However, just five houses were built in Monash last year as part of this initiative. They are welcome, but they barely make a dent in the problem. Another cause for concern is that the homelessness support service system is incredibly complex and ranges from large government agencies through, through to smaller church groups. The location of many services making access to them difficult and many often have limited or no outreach capacity. Many require people to attend the office-based appointments that lead to limited services. There is much frustration within the system. Uh, coordinating approaches and services is increasingly difficult. Often these services provide are uh, hamstrung by red tape and rules. Red tape and bureaucratic box ticking can mean that simple forms of assistance experience long delays. Here in the inner city, a project backed by the City of Melbourne, Collingwood Football Club and Australia Post to provide 150 lockers and about 170 mailboxes for the use of homeless people at the Salvation Army Centre in Bourke Street took 18 months to get off the ground. Zoning regulations have meant churches have been restricted in offering overnight shelter to homeless people in the outer eastern suburbs. In times of crisis, our system requires to tick all the boxes and fit into categories that allow us to collect number that I can stand here today and quote you. But even when you don't feel fit neatly into the boxes, we, we define them. They still need our help. Mr President, I just can't fathom what it's like to be in this situation. So I'm going to find out in a very limited way. At the, at the end of the next sitting week on June 20, I will participate in the Vinnie CEO sleep out. I will sleep rough for the night on a cardboard box with a warm sleeping bag and I expect a well-stocked soup chicken, uh, kitchen. Uh, there will be speakers and we'll have a great experience, perhaps gain a very limited understanding of what it's like to sleep rough on the streets of Melbourne. I hope the members of this house will support me uh, uh, by choosing to adjourn quite late that evening, um, but especially by sharing the message among your followers and your constituents. What this experience won't replicate is the stress, the anxiety, uh, what these people face. For me, it's just one night. Uh, there is no terror for us. I have presented a lot of uh, numbers here. I make no apologies for that. But please remember that these numbers represent people. They represent the most vulnerable in our society, our mothers, our daughters, their children. Too often, they are now including the elderly. These are not just numbers. They tell a very sad, uh, they tell a very sad story. They give reason to warrant more thorough investigation. My motion to ask the Legal and Social Issues Committee to provide an independent analysis of the changing scale and the nature of homelessness across Victoria. We need to get a proper handle on this. I want a committee to investigate why, what are the many social, economic and policy factors that impact on homelessness, and I want the committee to identify policies and practices from all levels of government that have a bearing on delivering services to the homeless. Let's work together to fix this. 
I would like to finish by reading a message I have received this morning from uh, Ms Patton, who isn't here with us today, but has expressed to me her support for this motion. I commend this motion to the House. Ms Chepstra. Uh, 